Hey, welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another re-retro shiz look at the year-long Spider-Man the Animated Series VHS box set collection. This is number three in that series, and I'm very happy to have these characters. It's quite the team-up, being that it's Green Goblin and Mary Jane Watson, and the box features beautiful artwork by artist Harry Moore Design. Please check him out on Instagram, and if you're not familiar, yes, it's a box set made to look like old VHS tapes, and it's quite the team-up, because Harry, Norman, or otherwise, Mary Jane definitely had her run-ins with the Green Goblin on Spider-Man the Animated Series. So, this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, Grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man the Animated Series VHS box set collection, The Green Goblin and Mary Jane Watson. So then here's everything taken out of the box. You have a couple accessories. You have two figures. One of them is definitely the standout. We're just going to say, I know Spider-Man the Animated Series like the backs of my hands... We got lots to talk about. Green Goblin comes with a pumpkin bomb. It's the usual pumpkin bomb we usually see with any goblins that Hasbro does. Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, they did not use pumpkin bombs like this in the show. They weren't always on fire like in the comics. They were just a pumpkin bomb. Do that next time, please. And then you have, of course, what everyone's saying is Norman Osborn, which, sure, right? That's... Well, not really, right? I would say it's more Harry Osborn. If you look at Spider-Man the Animated Series, which this is what they're going for, that looks like Harry. A more stylized version of Harry, don't get me wrong, but I really do like that it looks a heck of a lot more like Harry Osborn when he's all, quote-unquote, drugged out in the Animated Series, right? But we've never had Harry Osborn in action figure form as the Green Goblin. Of course, when he's not Green Goblin, he looks like this, right? More normalized. And yes, at some points in the episode where he does become the Green Goblin, he looks more normalized like he does in his little sports coat, right? But that's part of the fun, right? He looks like Harry so much more than Norman, because if you look at Norman, which is a previously released head sculpt, he doesn't have that sweet hair, you know what I'm talking about? Norman has more of the long face, more of a, a chiseled sort of bigger chin, right? You can tell it's Norman, and you can tell when it's Harry. And for me, yeah, that's a lot more Harry Osborn, because he just looks a lot more feminine. <laughs> And that's kind of how I see Harry Osborn. Now, you have the Goblin Glider, which they've turned purple this time around. That's, that's a plus. But then, is it exactly the Glider, which Hobgoblin and Green Goblin both shared the same exact designs? Well, yes and no. Again, it's a reuse. They've changed the faceplate. It doesn't come with this stand, which I think it should have, right? That would have been a nice touch, a nice pack-in. When you get the stand on there... It definitely holds the weight. It definitely gets him up in the air. So for that, it's cool. It's just okay. We'll say at least it's purple. But like I said, you get him on the stand. You get him holding the pumpkin bomb. Norman or Harry, that's a pretty cool looking Green Goblin. And of course, Green Goblin, like I said, hold on uh, one second. Let me just fix this. Uh, yeah, the man purse of the Green Goblin, at least in Spider-Man Animated, goes on this side right here from, again, Norman when he's flying around, or Harry, when he's bumbling around. <laughs> but hey, at least Diamond Select got it right. Look at the head portrait on that one. <sighs> nice. Now, this head portrait on this Marvel Legends Green Goblin is pretty good. I do like it. It's a little off in some senses, but it's primarily this image right here, that screen grab directly from Spider-Man Animated. I like... The colors, for the most part, see, I'm kind of like hemming and hawing. They got the neck wrong. The neck is supposed to be green up until the part of the purple costume, right? The skin tone, everything is a little off here and there. I'm just going to say. And I'm really going to nitpick this because I love Spider-Man animated. But we're all just having fun, so don't worry about it. Now, with the whole man purse, again, you're going to have to kind of shuffle that around. That You've turned it around. It's supposed to go... The other way. The belts! The belt is wrong. He does not have a belt that looks like that. It's more of a rectangle with a circle inside, not a full-on belt buckle. But the coloring is kind of there, right? Speaking of coloring, they did get the mismatched purple to the darker purple from the underoos to the rest of the costume. 
Norman and Harry both had those discrepancies in the cartoon. So that's cool to see. I like that. When it comes to the gloves, the gloves are nearly there. They're more pirate gloves as opposed to, say, this Green Goblin's gloves. They're more like kitchen gloves or like a sock, right? They don't really have much of detail, if anything. Same with the boots, right? It's kind of the same thing, whether you put it on your arms or your feet. Those are the way the kind of boots go. Overall, it's less piratey for the gloves and the boots, we'll just say that. But they did give the tips of his boots right. I totally dig that. You gotta have that for the Green Goblin. So yes, it is very cobbled together at the end of the day. Does it look good? It's all right. I do like the masked goblin head portrait. The unmasked, as I'll say again, very much reminds me of Harry Osborn from the animated series. It's definitely not like comic book Harry Osborn. And with the whole green parts of the skin, see how they have little notches, little black marks to insinuate that he's wearing chainmail, kind of, sort of. That would have been a nice touch to put on various places, on the arms and the legs, just to kind of have that. So, basically, if I could take this Green Goblin and this Green Goblin and somehow mush them together, yeah, you might be able to cobble together a fairly decent animated Green Goblin. But, we'll say this again. I like certain aspects of the figure. Is it completely accurate to the animated series? Definitely not. Is it halfway there? Eh, kind of, sort of. It's... Just okay, and just to kind of show you what Norman Osborn, right, from the prior release Green Goblin looks like. You see, it's a little bit of a smaller head, but that's the difference to me, where Norman is a lot more of this type of look, whereas Harry's got a little bit more of the cheekbony feminine features. That's really how I see him. So to be honest, yeah, you can say it's Norman, you can say it's Harry, you can go either which way, whatever your preferences may be, but in knowing the animated series and just looking at these designs for years and years and years, like I said, I know it likes the back of my hand. Certain changes I would have loved to have seen, but for now, the Screen Goblin is just okay. But when it comes to the other member of this box set, why they did a knockout, especially with these fists right here and Mary Jane Watson, my god, that is Mary Jane Watson from Spider-Man the Animated Series, that is killer. I love what they did here, look at the animation design, and now look at the action figure. There you go. You have the yellow sweater, the purple turtleneck, the blue jeans, the boots, red hair, that's her design. Now again, it's a little bit more stylized, a little bit more realistic than the animated series, but it's definitely there in spirit. I would say she's probably one of the best aspects of any of the Spider-Man the Animated Series figures that they've put out. And even subtle little cell shading on her sweater for the buttons. I dig that. You didn't go overboard. You didn't go crazy. You didn't McFarlaneize it. <laughs> it's nice. Keep the cell shading to a minimum if you're going to do any cell shading in the future. But I like what I see here. And she's all pinless, which is a nice touch as well. She's a new figure, so you'd hope that she would be pinless. But as simplistic as the animation is, it definitely applies itself very beautifully to this beautiful figure. Now, of course, Spider-Man, Green Goblin, Mary Jane, how do they all stack up? Well, with Marvel Legends, honestly, you never really have a problem with height discrepancies, right? It's kind of a nice change of pace as opposed to some McFarlane figures that we look at. Aunt May, Venom, as much as you wanna team these up to show off heights, yeah, there you go. You can definitely do that. Mary Jane joins a cult. Yeah, you could put her with Doctor Strange as well. One thing, though, let's start giving characters with hands that can hold things. She can barely hold the Wand of Watoom, right? Same thing with Spider-Man over here. And, of course, you could put her with the Kingpin when she nearly slips in the Enter the Green Goblin episode. Go back and watch it. Now, this is a fun pair-up, right? You have Maury Bench, Hydro Man, who Mary Jane in the animated series used to date. Go back and watch this now. She wrecks him, like, brutally, right? But a nice little pack-in to make Mary Jane this version, the clone, would have been cool to have Hydro Man powers for her. That would have been a nice little snap-on arm effect, right? And just as a little bit of foreshadowing for the next box set, yes, she looks fantastic with the Season 2 and Beyond Peter Parker from Spider-Man the Animated Series. It looks great. Although Felicia Hardy, Black Cat, I don't know if she's too happy about that whole thing. She's got Morbius. She's fine. Now, this is definitely going to be a fun mashup, right? You have Goblin Wars, Hobgoblin, Green Goblin, heck, even the whole series finale, you could say that. But if you notice in the Hobgoblin's hand, he has a time dilation accelerator. Well, the Green Goblin 
he might need his own. That's why you're going to have to hit up Nuada Toys, Nuada Designs. He is based in Ireland. This dude makes amazing Spider-Man the Animated Series accessories. It just brings a smile to my face. He even makes custom action figures like Lieutenant Terry Lee and Blade from the Animated Series. Look how killer that looks. This dude is rocking it. This is what I want to see from a Spider-Man the Animated Series line. Attention to detail, show specific accessories, and he nails this in spades. So very cool overall. Please definitely check him out and he sent over this awesome care package which included the green goblins modified smaller <laughs> even though it's not really it doesn't seem like it's time dilation accelerator remember how he miniaturized it i don't know go figure but in looking at these you have let's say hobgoblins the spots that sort of time dilation accelerator. You flip the hibba jibba right there, like Lenny said. Uh, you can try to sell it at the pawn shop too if you like. But the coloring, the sculpt, the design is perfect. And then you have Green Goblin's miniaturized time dilation accelerator, of course. And again, that is amazing. I have to still find a way to attach it the way he does in the cartoon. But it's all there. It looks fantastic. So again, please check out new auto designs if you're interested in any of these along with his goblin glider now to look at the goblin glider that came with this hasbro release and now to look at this yes this version is 3d printed it's a little rough around the edges but in looking at it the design aspect they nailed it they even had the little footprints right there on it right when they fly this thing around and this new green goblin looks great on it you can check out my new hobgoblin video as well if you want to see more but see the comparisons right there much more spot on while this one is just a, a touch up here and there but basically a repaint now to see what's come before to see what's happening now you have toy biz and you have the hasbro marvel legends and i gotta say yes in many ways this is definitely an upgrade to mary jane <laughs> they got a lot wrong on the toy biz one it was kind of there the green goblin though that's where I think the Toy Biz one still holds up a little bit and where I'd like to have seen a few more extra hands with the Green Goblin, like a zappy pointy hand. That would have been kind of cool. But regardless, I am happy with these because they're doing more with Spider-Man the Animated Series. It's fun for me to have these. No, they're not perfect. The next box set certainly is. But it's nice to have Spider-Man the Animated Series being tackled in some ways, but if I could make any suggestions, right? Call me up. I'm available for consulting, right? We can do this. I like attention to detail. I like certain things to look exactly like they're supposed to look on the animated series. And in this day and age, with everyone doing so many crazy awesome toys, there really isn't any excuse at this point. Everything should look pretty on model. That's why we have all these computers. But I, I gotta tell you, with this Green Goblin holding Mary Jane, on top of the old Toy Biz Goblin Glider and everything else. Yeah, that's definitely the turning point for my collection. And as close to the animated series as it's ever been. So, that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man The Animated Series VHS Box Set Collection Number 3, Green Goblin and Mary Jane Watson. And of course... You have heard my thoughts. I know I had a lot of them. A lot of probably out there go, oh, he's nitpicking it to death. Well, I mean, we have to have something to talk about. What do you want me to do? Just show off the articulation and call it a day? Come on, we're having fun here, and I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, and I love hearing from all you other Spider-Man animated fans out there. So, of course, let me know down in the comments what you think, and I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, this is a lot of fun, especially when you got them all lined up on your shelf. There's some great things happening here, and I'm really stoked to talk about the next box set. And when I do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.